Welcome everyone. From now onward, we'll resume. Uh, we'll start Unit Two, which will discuss in detail various styles of constructing different kind of combination and sequence circuits out of the MOS transistors and MOS and PMOS transistors. In Unit One, we went through the basic construction and the basic operation of MOS and PMOS transistors, including the formula for the current consumption. Unit two, we'll look into detail uh, of uh, different styles used for construct construction of different gates. We we'll, uh, the first uh, uh, chapter of unit two, we'll discuss. We will see. Let's see the outline of this. We'll see uh, different types of. We'll see some examples of complex gates which are designed using static beam of circuit. We look at uh, different kinds of. Uh, we look at tri-state inverters, tri-state buffers, different kind of muxes, inverting and non-inverting. We will see how fast transistors and transmission gates are used. We will see uh, an example of a, of a layout of a, of a slightly bigger circuit and also an inverter. And we I will try and point out the just the uh, important parts of the layout so that we understand how the How the capacitances are minimized during the layout. We look at uh, there are a couple of slides about stick diagrams. Stick diagrams are very very useful when you want to represent a layout on a paper. So let's start with a with a schema of gate design. Uh, I would recommend uh, during the uh, during this and other unit two lectures to have pen and paper ready so that you all are very able to quickly. Draw the circuit on your paper. That will be very very helpful in understanding the design. So this is the first activity which I want you all to do. Take a four input two MOS NAND gate. This should not be very difficult considering you looked at two and three input NAND gates in unit one. So just to just to review that a NAND gate, uh, the there will be two parts of the circuit. The pull down will be connected to the ground, which Will be comprised of a MOS transistor. The pull-up part will be connected to VDD, which will be comprised of the PMOS transistor. Each input of any gate will be connected to two transistors, one MOS and one PMOS. That is to the gate input of that. So a four-input NAND gate will have eight transistors. That is four pairs of PMOS and MOS. The pull down network, that is the NMOS, will represent the complement of the function that I have So, an AND, the pull down will become the AND, and all the NMOS will be in series. The PMOS represents the complement of NMOS, so all the PMOS will be in parallel. So, we uh, try and uh, draw this circuit on the paper. Correspondingly, what I would do is uh, we'll see a four input NOR gate. So. You could all also say that the NAND gate will be complement of the NOR gate. So uh, let, let's let's discuss. Let's review the NOR gate also. So as I said, that each input, let's say A, A for this exam in this example, will be connected to two transistors, one PMOS and one NMOS. It will be connected to the gate input of the both transistors. The pull down network will be connected to ground. The pull up network will be connected to VDD. The uh, the pull down network shall represent the complement of the function we are trying to implement. In this case, the function we are trying to implement is MOS. So the pull down network of NMOS shall represent an all logic that means all the N, all the NMOS here will be in parallel. Which is the case here. Similarly, the pull-up network, which is connected to VDD there, will be the complement of the NMOS or the pull-down network. Since all the NMOS are in parallel, the PMOS shall be in series. So VDD is connected to PMOS one, and PMOS one is connected to PMOS two. And the output for this kind of circuit is always taken from the common train. Uh, or, or whatever train of course you want to call it. Uh, 
the uh, the Y here will be connected to this gate source. So the convention says that whatever is at higher voltage shall be called the source. We'll call this point source of uh, this these transistors. So Y is connected to the source of, or it is, it will also be connected to two two points. That is one is the source for all the ten MOSFETs. Other one, let's say, is the drain of all the beam of the In this way, uh, you could construct simple gate uh, as many with as many inputs as you want. So just keep, keep just remember two important points. Uh, uh, let's let's see on the next slide. So we call this type of circuit as static CMOS. Why static? Okay. Uh, Static because in steady state, that is, whenever the values on all the inputs are stable, the output will be either tied to zero through the pull down network, through the NMOS pull down network, the output will be either zero when, whenever pull down is on, and whenever pull up is on and pull down is off, the output will be tied to one through VDD. The inputs drive the gate inputs of the transistor. Please note, please be very careful in noting down that the output is not directly controlled to input. The output is always driven by either VDD or ground. This means what this means that if let's say there is any noise on input, let's say the inputs are such that the output has to be one that is connected to VDD, and if there is a little bit of noise on input. Within the noise margin, we will see what noise margins are later, but if the noise is within the noise margin, the output will not see any noise since it is not driven by input directly, it is driven by the VDD or ground. Another thing to uh, another thing to uh, let us see this quick table. So, whenever pull down is off, uh, so this, this represents like whenever pull down is off and pull up is off. That is this quadrant. The uh, the output is Z. That is, it is neither connected to VDD nor connected to ground. Now this case will not happen in case of a static C mode. Why? Because uh, we are assuming that all the inputs are driven to some value, and since C MOS and N MOS are complement to each other, the case of both being on or both being off. Will not usually happen. These two quadrants are valid cases. So whenever pull up is on, the output is uh, connected to VDD. Whenever pull down is on, the output is connected to VDD. Now also notice one thing that in the steady state, that is whenever the inputs are not switching, the output will draw almost negligible current. That is, if it is connected to VDD. The uh, the resistance, the on resistance of a transistor is quite low actually. So uh, it is drawing very very negligible amount of current from VDD. Similarly, when it is connected to ground via NMOS, it is uh, sourcing very uh, it is sinking very negligible amount of current. What this means is that this kind of circuit is very power efficient. When we see different logic styles in later chapters. Uh, please try and differentiate between this logic style and other logic style on the basis of power. Now, NMOS and PMOS in independently also are switches, so they can be used to make the different type of gates. One of the examples. This this is not a very popular style. Uh, we'll come we'll come to this uh, why is it being so in the next slide. So. When NMOS is on, uh, when NMOS the gate input is one, the NMOS is on. When the gate input it is zero, the PMOS is on. So let's look at figure A. So A is connected to B by a, a series of two transistors, they are both NMOS. So whenever both G1 and G2 are one, A will be connected to B. So you could say that the function represented here being represented here. Is G1 and G2. So uh, there is a simple proof table of an AND gate. 
similarly when we look at the pmos so pmos would again be the complement of nmos so whenever either of whenever both of them are zero then only the gate will be on so this represents an and gate here we see that uh, the circuit of a of two nmos transistors in parallel so when either of g1 or g2 is one a will be connected to b which is this case this case and this case and both have an also a will be connected to b similarly the fourth figure is nothing but the pmos and complement of c now again the important point to note here is that g1 and g2 are controlling signal and if the uh, and a is in some of the cases whenever there is a path exists from a to b a is the input which is connected to the brain and b is connected to the source so in some of the cases the path exists between a and b and considering let's say the output is b as the other way around also the output can also be a so a and b are connected with each other in some of the cases which means that a noise signal on a would be passed on on to b this is an important point to consider in this case this kind of circuit i mean building whole gates using this style is not very popular because of the reason i said because the noise gets passed easily now as i discussed earlier let uh, i would like to repeat this point that a complementary cmos gate will always produce either 0 or 1 the rule of conduction complement says that the pull up pull up network is always the complement of pull down network or it means is that if the pull down network is deep, is series the pull up network will be parallel and vice versa you can you can see see any of the circuits we have discussed earlier is the two input and gate or two input non gate or three input and gate or three input non gate always the pull down network is the complement of pull up network this makes our job very easy when we want to construct complex gates we will see uh, in the next time so here is one of the compound gates a very popular gate and and or invert so the notation which is being followed in the in the in the string is a is for and o is for or i is for invert so this gate is a o i 2 2 now any compound gate uh, any compound gate that is doing an inverting inverting function now please remember that cmos logic by design is an inverting logic what it means is that let's say let's go back a slide and see a two input and gate So a two input NAND gate would need a per input two transistors, in total four transistors. But the function of Y is A dot B AND. If you want an AND gate, you would have to add one more stage of converter after Y. That would mean that AND gate would would have a two input AND gate will need six transistors. So whenever we discuss compound gate, it's easier to discuss the gates which have inverting function that is y will be complement of some function in this case y is complement of a dot b plus c dot d now a non inverting function can be implemented just by adding an inverter at the output of y so most of the compound gates that we discuss that we discuss in the in the coming slide will be in the form of y is equal to complement of some function so a converting to a non complement complementing one will be simply adding an inverter so let's look at this now a dot b plus c dot d now what we could say is that is the non complementing part that is a dot b plus c dot d we can easily construct the pull down circuit with with it and pull up will be simply complement of that so let's look at uh, figure e so uh, figure e we see that a a and b are in series so a dot b means a and b are in series similarly c dot d means c and d are in series 
A plus sign means an or of both. So here A dot B and C dot D are in parallel, and this is a pull down and will be connected to one. Now when we try and do the complement of this, we are left with almost a similar sort of structure. So A dot B in series here would mean that A and B are in parallel. C dot D in series here means that C and D are in parallel. A complement, a plus sign would here mean that they are the two are in series. So uh, what would help is in analyzing the circuit is writing uh, writing down on paper uh, the complement of this. So uh, now let's 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 look also at the smaller smaller part of the circuit. Let's say A. So A B in series. Let's do this. A B plus C D in series. So A B R in series. C and D R in series. A plus sign would mean going from A to B. We we'll add a plus sign. That is an or. We'll, we'll combine A and B and C and D to convert an or function. Then we go on to C. Now what is so A and B will be in parallel. C and D will be in parallel. When we combine them, we just connect. Uh, The part here, we just connect the part here to the part here. So what would that mean? Is that P is connected to A and D is connected to B now with a connecting wire. Where does this wire? Where does this wire come from? It wire this this wire is common to this point and this point. So we get E. This is the logic diagram of this circuit. Uh, so uh, please take a moment to review this circuit, review the construction of this compound gate. I'll have one or two more examples. Okay, let's move on. This is one more example of OCAI. What OCAI means is that it means or of three inputs, and the output of that will be handed to one more input. Uh, and invert is the default the logic function is y is equal to a plus b plus c or of all these and into d and complement of this so this is a circuit let's again review this for pull down we should look at the non complement part and implement as it is in and mos A B C being in parallel, A B C being in parallel, and the whole circuit should be in series with B. The whole circuit is in series with B. For the pull-up part, A B and C should be in series, and the whole of it should be parallel to B. Whole of it should be parallel to B. You could also uh, see and apply inputs at Each of A, B, and C to see if it really satisfies Y. So let's say let's say D is one. D one means this N MOS is functional. This is connected to Y. This part. And then when either A, B, C is one or any of these is one, Y would be connected to D one, which is in turn satisfied by this. equation d b 1 and any of a b or c is 1 y would be complement of 1 which is 0 and we should also verify correspondingly that this circuit since only one of the pull down or pull up can be operation let's also verify that in the same condition this part would be off so when d is 1 this is off and when any of a b and c is 1 this whole part would be off so you don't get a connection from y to b which is the basic principle of this kind of of a static cmos network at one given time only one of the pull down or pull up can be active and let's come to signal strength the strength of the signal so let's say you have a network of gates Each in any other design, you will have 
typical VLSI chip contain billions of transistors. Billions of transistors means millions of hundreds, thousands of gates. A lot of gates have are connected in their their multi-state network. That means that there will be let's say an AND connected to OR connected to an inverter and, and so on. So each of those gates, each of the outputs and inputs of those gates, we have to see they should all be relatively strong. That means to to make sure that the functionality of the whole digital design is correct. So we have to see so each of the, those inputs and those outputs, when we say how strong is the signal, we need to check how strongly does it approximate the ideal voltage source. The ideal voltage source in this case being VDD and GND rails. VDD and GND rails are supposed to be strongest, are sources of strongest 1 and 0. How strong? What does a strong mean in quantitative terms? Now let us say in my chip the VDD is 1.0 volt and GND is 0 volt. So, a strong one would mean a voltage value which is very, very close to VDD that is 1.0 volt. How close? Let us say 5 percent of let us say it should not be worse than minus 5 percent of VDD. That means a strong one would be somewhere between 0.95 to 1.0 1 volt. Similarly, a strong 0 would be between 0 and 5 millivolt. We saw earlier that NMOS passes a strong 0, that is why it is used in the pull down network, but it passes a degraded or weak 1. We also saw that NMOS while passing 1, it will uh, the VT of the transistor will be subtracted from VVT. So, a VDT at the source or drain at the drain would and the gate being also tied to VDD would mean the voltage on the output that is source is VDD minus VT. Similarly, CMOS will pass strong one that is why it is used in a pull up network, but degraded or weak 0 right. Now, with that thing in mind, we have also we will review again review the past transistors and the usage of them in switches. We we we've seen this earlier, but uh, the, the the discussion of past transistor is important here to see how transmission gates are constructed out of them. So again, let's go through the past transistor. Past transistor, what it means is that the input is being applied at source and the output is being taken at drain or vice versa. So, if gate is 0, source and drain for NMOS are disconnected, if gate is 1, if the input is 0, if the input at S is 0, the drain would be strong 0, if S is 1, the drain will be a degraded 1. What it means if S is VDD, the drain would be VDD minus VT. Similarly, whenever CMOS is on, if S is 0, the output is degraded 0. That means output will be BSS plus absolute value of VT of the PMOS transistor. When it's when the input is one, it will be a strong one. Now what we do here is that from our the past transistor, we combine the NMOS and the PMOS, and so NMOS passes a strong 0, CMOS pass, passes a strong 1. We saw that static CMOS gates, they utilize this functionality to make sure that output is always a strong 0 or strong 1 and how do they do that? By making the pull down complement of the pull up network. Now here while construction of transmission gate, we connect to, we connect a PMOS we connect a PMOS circuit here and an NMOS circuit here by the we connected connect both the source and both the drain together. This was not the case in pump in static CMOS. Please note here the input is not coming from the gate, the input is coming from the source side and going to B. B is the output. Now, let us see how this functions. 
whenever now uh, uh, please note that, that one input is connected to the gate G other is the complement of gate G is nothing but complement of G whenever G is 0 the NMOS is off GB is 1 the PMOS is off A is not connected to B whenever G is 1 and GB is 0 they both are connected what it means if the input is 1 the PMOS here make sure that output is strong 0 although there is connection also via NMOS but the PMOS makes sure that the output is strong 1 whenever A is 0 the NMOS makes sure that the output is strong 0. So we utilize the properties of both NMOS and PMOS to construct a gate a switch in fact a simple switch which makes sure that output is not degraded. This is the symbol of uh, these are the example of symbols of AMD uh, of the transmission gate. So in transmission gate we have three symbols the input A, output B and the controlling gate input G but we also need the complement of G which is B. Let us see how transmission gate is now used now we realize that a transmission gate can be a good switch let us see how do we use it to make this circuit. One of the most famous circuits is a tri state buffer. Now a tri state buffer produces uh, so in fact the switch the, the switch we saw here this switch is nothing but a tri state buffer. So a tri state buffer has an enable pin so the G is now labeled as enable and uh, both enable and enable complement are available whenever enable is 0 whenever enable is 0 the output we saw it is not connected to input and we represent the output the logic label on, on output to be Z. The Z is a tri state that means it is neither connected to VDD nor the nor the ground. Now whenever enable is 1 it simply acts as a buffer a 0 on A will, would mean a 0 on Y a 1 on A would mean 1 on Y. Now let us compare this to a, a basic static CMOS circuit. So we, we are let us compare the two different styles. Now the basic gate the basic gate in CMOS static circuit was an inverter which had two transistors so Y was the complement of A and PMOS and NMOS uh, are not I mean the this let us say the source of one is connected to drain of other. Now in case of transmission gates the basic gate here is not an inverter but a triphasic buffer and it has a one separate input called the enable pin. It uses it also uses two transistors but the, but the basic functionality is that of a buffer. However, this also needs the complement of enable pin which should also add let us say one inverter and two transistors. So, the basic gate in case of a transmission gate is a buffer, the basic gate in case of a complementary CMOS is an inverter. Now we call this uh, kind of a transmission gate as non restoring. Why non restoring is that because the noise on A is passed on to Y as we discussed earlier because whenever enable is 1 whenever this gate is enabled since the sources are connected to drains uh, these both of these NMOS and PMOS are conducting a noise of the source of a transistor can transfer transform into the noise on a gate, on, gate of the transistor. So any noise on A will pass on Y. So it is known that the tri state buffers are noise cone with such a construction. Okay, now there is one more slight uh, modification onto this uh, tri state buffer and we make out a tri state inverter out of this let us see how we, how we can do that. It is a very tri state inverter is a very very popular style of logic design. It is used heavily in construction of MOSFETs. let us see how and plus it is also restoring that means the noise is not passed on to the output let us see how. Now what we do is uh, okay in the previous slide I want 
want to mention one thing. It says that a transmission gate needs only two transistors, which is not exactly true. Yes, it it needs two transistors, but to, uh, but it is assuming that the not of in, enable is already available. Now what we do here is that we we connect the enable. We make let's say this the the part here. This part, what does it represent in isolation? What it represents is that these two transistors here, this P MOS and this N MOS, they represent an inverter here. But the same input is not connected here. N MOS is connected to EN and P MOS is connected to EN bar, just like in case of a trans transmission gate buffer. A sim simple, a single input A is connected to P MOS here and N MOS here. What it means? Is that yeah? Uh, what it means is that whenever enable is one, this is turned on. This is also turned on because enable is zero. Enable bar is zero, and it's a simple inverter. That means a this this whole circuit, this this transistor here, this transistor here, and this transistor here. This this circuit now is just an inverter, simple inverter. And whenever enable is zero, this is open. And why is it? So again, we notice two things here. It violates conduction complement rule. The pull down is not the conduction is not the complement of the pull up. Why? Because we want a Z output. Second important thing is that noise on A is not noise on A is not transferred on Y. Because A is driving the gate input of the transistor. This is the symbol, the logic symbol of of a tri-state inverter. You can we can either either represent it by this or by this. In in the case of the first one, it is implicit that a conduction a, a complement of EN is available. In this case, we are making the connection explicit. Okay, so. Just a few important things to remember: a normal CMOS inverter, a transmission gate buffer, and a trans and a tri-state inverter. So we see all these three basic gates. Now we see how tri-state inverters are used. Right? Now uh, I mentioned very uh, I mentioned uh, that. A tri-state inverter is most popular in construction of MOSFETs. Uh, so this is the case. Let's look at a two is to one MOS. Let's review the MOS functionality. Whenever the select pin is zero, no matter what happens on D1, the D0 will be passed on to Y. So select select is zero. Y will get whatever is present on D0. Similarly, when select is one, Y would get whatever is present on D1. Now let's say if you would want to construct this MOS out of a complementary, uh, out of a static PMOS uh, design style. So what we would look for is we would look for first of all the Boolean expression. Now y, y is equal to S D1 plus S bar D0. Now as we uh, we notice that any function should be in form of a complement. So we could say that y is equal to we could we could add a couple of complements here, two complements, and we could construct a we could construct a a pull down network out of. So let's let's first see how now we could uh, for for constructing the static CMOS CMOS circuit. This uh, the complement the first complement here. The top com topmost complement would mean adding an inverter at the output stage, and the remaining of the the remaining circuit here, the complement of SD1 and SD1, this this remaining here would go down as a pull up and a pull pull down network, right? So uh, let's see how many transistors are needed. The answer is 20. You could go back and verify. Let's let's see how how 20. Why 20? So this would mean AND gate and inverter and an AND gate. 
here we have done some bubble pushing here to convert this uh, and and into a NAND, adding an inverter, and again adding an inverter. So each in, so uh, a two input NAND gate. If you go back and remember, the two input NAND gate needs four transistors. So and in turn would need a six, need six transistors because one more inverter is added. So the, we have just labeled the number of transistors. So each NAND requires four. Additional inverter requires two. Again, a NOR requires a four and a two, and an inverter two. So in total, this MOS would need twenty transistors to implement. Now let's look at the power of transmission gate. In specifically, transmission uh, not transmission gate. In fact, a tri-state inverter. So, uh, or uh, or let's say let's let's first look at transmission gate. Now, a non-restoring MOS. Uh, we label this as non-restoring because again, it's transmission gate based, and noise on inputs will travel to output. That's why we say it's non-restoring. So we need only four transistors. How come? Now, uh, the two of the trans both transmission gates can be connected. The outputs of both trans two transmission gates can be connected to the output. Can be tied to the output. However, we have to make sure that only one of the transmission gate is active at one time. How do we do that? We make sure by uh, by connecting the inputs, the the enables in such a way. We connected S here, and we connected S here to the bubble. But here, in the second case, the S is connected to the non-complement. Similarly, S bar. Is connected to the bubble here, and S bar is connected to the non-complemented input here. What this means is that the the enable or the S connection to the top transmission gate and to the bottom transmission gate are both complementary. What it means, if S is zero, if S is zero, the P MOS here is active, S bar is one, the P the N MOS here is active, so this path is neutral. If S is zero. If S is one, in that case, this is switched off. Why? Because S is one, P MOS is off, S complement is zero, N MOS is off. Now this part becomes enabled if S is one. So a transmission gate MOS needs four transistors. If we compare apples to apples, this means we have to also take care that this S here would need an inverter. This S actually would need an inverter here. This is this S is connected here, and S will be S bar will be available here. So this inverter means two, two more transistors. So four plus two six, and the earlier one had twenty transistors. The only disadvantage in transmission gate marks is the non-restoring power. Right. Now let's see an inverting mark. What the inverting mux means? Inverting mux means uh, nothing but the output is y is just a complement of the earlier uh, mux we saw. So uh, y would be nothing but uh, uh, the complement of uh, the regular mux. So there's a bubble. There's a bubble here. If you notice, there's a bubble here. Yeah. Now, uh, if we use a Simple uh, AOI type of gate. Then uh, we see that we need eight transistors to implement this using a static PMOS. How? Let's see the construction here. So let's uh, uh, yeah. So D zero. D. Let's see, look at the pull down first. So pull down. Uh, so uh, let. So you have. We have to see that the first. S bar and D zero are and together, so D zero here and S bar. This is an and connection. Similarly, S and D one is again an and connection. Both of this is an or connection, so this is an or. This this connection is an or connection. Similarly, the pull up part would be a complement. We saw the construction of AOI two two earlier. This is exactly same. Only the inputs are labeled differently. That is, the earlier the inputs were A and B. Now they are D zero and D one. Or this is the first case. This is the first case. 
or what we could do is we could use a pair of tri state inverter we saw that this is the construction of tri state inverter again if you are uh, if we are connecting multi stage tri state inverter to construct a mux then we have to make sure that the connections of s and s bar are complementary to the two stages so s and s bar are connected differently here d0 and d1 are connected in the same fashion so this uh, is very very similar to the to this circuit we saw earlier and also to this circuit we see here both utilize eight transistor but now this inverter the, sorry this inverted mux here is the restoring type because uh, all the inputs are at the gates let's look at a still bigger uh, multiplexer we what we saw earlier was a 2 2s to 1 multiplexer now let's look at 2s to 1 multiplexer it chooses one of the four input and there are two select lines so again it's a uh, going back to your digital design basic a uh, 4s to 1 multiplexer can be constructed out of two 2s to 1 multiplexer with the the lsv the s0 controlling the two muxes here and the s1 controlling the uh, mux which controls the output now uh, we could a very simple circuit of this is connecting four tri state inverters to the output now please note that here for 2s to 1 multiplexer this one and this one there these are two tri state inverters connected as the output of both of them is feeding by similarly for 4s to 1 there will be four tri state inverters output each of these outputs connected to y however the enable will change now so the lowest the the msb that is b3 will be s0 s1 d2 will be s1 s0 bar again d1 will be s1 bar s0 and d0 will be s1 and s0 bar also note that we would need transistor we would need inverters here to get the logic level values of so we need s0 and s0 complement we need s1 and s1 complement so we will need two two inverters one for s0 complement other for s1 complement so each of the uh, so in fact these inverters are shown here these inverters are shown here so s1 direct direct connection again this is the nothing but s0 bar okay so we see that a circuit which has a very big uh, comparatively a bigger boolean expression for a 4s to 1 mock is in implementation is actually not a very big circuit is just four tri state inverters all connected in series to y this is the power of tri state inverters in construction of mocks now let's let's review this let's see an exercise of uh, construction like uh, the construction of a complex gate i would again request to do this to as the slides progress to try and do this on paper yourself now so this uh, we are we are the two components it's very popular uh, uh, now you must all be clear how to do this so the easiest way what i would suggest is to take the non complement part draw the pull down and then take the complement and draw the pull up in these slides uh, what we will be starting with the pull up part so we'll take the complement part so we just do a, a boolean rearrangement of this and we come up with the pull up part so this this what this means is that a and b would be in parallel the pmos the pull up network a and b would be in parallel and it with c or d and d e. let's look at the next slide so this is how we do that a and b are parallel c and c is again in series with d and e being in c sorry c is in, in parallel with d and e being in series and these two are connected like this this is a series connection that represents this ending here this is the pull up part again pull down part not very difficult just the complement of this so pull up pull down part is nothing but the 
the the non complement with this part non complemented part let's see on next slide this is a non complemented part a b plus c d plus e a b in series c plus d in a we combine both the pull up and the pull down part and construct the the pull circuit how many transistors we don't need to look at the circuit to to calculate that we have five inputs that means two that means 10 transistors five pairs so uh, i would request you uh, all to so at the end of this this lecture given any boolean expression you should be able to draw a static cmos circuit out of it we also saw that not all static C, not all cmos circuits or cmos designs are designed this way we also use the power of transmission gate and triestate inverter to construct circuits such as mus but still this is the most popular technique for complex logic circuits okay now look at and let's let's try how often is of a complex complex we arrived at a static cmos circuit we saw we now with the circuit in place we know how many transistors it's going to take now let's see a, a very basic layout how how the layout is made what things are taken into consideration each uh, layout is a technology based is that means layout is a technology specific that means a layout in by technology i mean the channel length that is for example if the channel length is 90 nanometer there will be some set of rules which need to be followed these rules come from foundry for example tsmc is a very is the largest foundry in the world based in taiwan so they will have according to their manufacturing processes they will have a set of rules which should be adhered to when we make the layout so layouts uh, in fact are very very time consuming the gates have to be fit fit together nicely it's one thing to make a complex gate out of transistors and it's another thing to lay them lay them out the actual area of the gate the actual how much space the gate occupies on silicon is very much determined by how well it is laid out so the basic methodology is that vdd and gnd rails when i mean i say rail i mean uh, they are connected to the power supply and there is a metal there is a copper interconnect on the on the layout so they they are called vdd rails vdd and gnd rails they should abut that means what it means what abutment means is that each uh, okay uh, first of all all these the uh, all these cells such as muxes and or inverts nands mod latches flip flops the mind we call them standard cells the standard cells are the basic building blocks of any digital design so usually what uh, what happens in industry is that already uh, the uh, let's say design team let's say a design team is making chips for the uh, mobile phones let's say now when they start making chips they already have a library of standard cells and either they have all either some team in their own company has designed all those standard cells and put them in place or they buy it from any third party but to start designing the logic they need this standard cells the libraries in place we'll see much more of this in synthesis so uh, these cells are called standard cells and a combination of all these cells is called a library now what we uh, vdd and gnd what abutment means is that all these cells should have fixed height but they can vary in width we'll see later why this is the first major rule then adjacent set uh, gates should satisfy design rule that means that there should be some minimum spacing between adjacent gates always the the convention is that nmos at bottom and at bottom and pmos at top so the nmos the pull down and the will be connected to ground and pmos at should be connected to vdd so vdd would be at top 
all gates should include well and substrate contact. Uh, so, in this case, uh, when so when we draw a, trans a, a transistor based circuit on paper, we do not show the substrate and the well contact. But layout needs to show that because layout is the one that goes goes to foundry for manufacturing. The circuit on paper will not go to foundry. It's only the layout, and that too in a in a machine readable binary format, it will go to the foundry for manufacturing. So all connections should be explicit and very very clear. How good a layout is often determines how well the circuit can be manufactured, how well the design can be manufactured. So let's see an inverter layout. We have already discussed this. Uh, so uh, the VGD and the ground rails run parallel to each other. There will be one. There will be one fixed height. Now let's say I am designing this inverter, and I also want to design an AND gate or an AND gate. So I have to make sure that the all of the gates I design I design will have same height, so that an AND gate here, let's say. When let's say uh, I construct a circuit now of an of an AND gate, so how would I do that? I would I would make an AND gate here, which would be connected to this inverter here. So the VGD rail, if continued here, should that is why I need to keep the height same so that both of these cells can be placed between VGD and GND rail. So VGD and GND rail. The space between them determines the height of all the cells. Right? They should be same for all the cells in the line. There are exceptions, but only for very very complex gates. But not usually. That is why we say that all standard cells should be of same height. Now, in the in the B part here, we also uh, show the explicit substrate and well taps. So, the NMOS here would need a ground tap for substrate. A PMOS here would need in this the shaded grey area area this this area represents the well so there is a well tap. Let's look at a slightly more complex gate which is nothing but which is NAND gate a three input NAND gate. Again, uh, how do we read a layout? So VGD GND rails are very very clear. The pull down part, the grey part here is uh, the NMOS diffusion layer. The uh, so uh, let's see now. The pull down network here. This pull down network A, B, and C. These are all in series. So let's let's start from ground. Ground connected to C. No, not not C. Sorry, uh, not to C, but the ground connected to the diffusion. Again, so this is again diffusion, diffusion connected to diffusion, again diffusion connected to diffusion, and again a diffusion going to one. Correspondingly, in layout, we see ground ray, there is a contact, there is a substrate tap connected to diffusion, 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 and then this goes to one. So the blue part here corresponds to the pull down network. Here. We see the pull up network. Now, pull up network VDD needs to be connected to three diffusion layers here. So, we see now VDD. This is this gray part is the well. We cannot see the gray part here because again, this gray is the same as the diffusion gray here. So, it's camouflaged. VDD here is connected to is connected to diffusion by a contact. Now, see here in the in the, in the pull down network, we notice that. The contact is needed to connect it to ground, but the region here, this region and this region here has no contact because none is needed. Right? But here, in the pull-up case, the VGD is connected to contact. The VGD is connected to this contact, and if you notice, the VGD should be connected to all three diffusions. But what about here? What about in the layout? Now in the layout. The connection from A to B, the connection from B to C actually, the the PMOS, this particular PMOS and this particular PMOS, they are both flipped in the sense they both share this common VDD. 
Why is this? Because we want to minimize contact, we want to minimize the metal length, metal routing. So, this is one way of doing that is that VDD is connected to A here, and this now VDD is this metal is being shared between B and C. Again, let us look at the inputs A, B, and C. So, inputs connect to gates. Now, what are gates? Gate made up of data made up of polysilicon, if we remember the unit 1. The construction of a MOS, the gate is nothing but a strip of polysilicon. Each input, each input here goes to two as, uh, transistors a PMOS and an NMOS. So, this A in layout is nothing but a, a wire of polysilicon, this is the wire of polysilicon connecting the gates of one PMOS and one NMOS. So, A goes here vertically. Again, B takes a D2, this is to satisfy some design rules. Again, C takes a D2. So, A, B, and C are three inputs. Let us look at Y, which is the output. Now, output is connected again, output is connected to the NMOS here at the bottom and network of PMOS at the top. So, Y here, let me clean this up a bit. Okay. Now, uh, so we see Y here is connected to the topmost. So NMOS are stacked. It is connected to the topmost here. So this actually this layout and this uh, the schematic don't match completely because here in the schematic B A is the topmost stack NMOS, but here we see that in fact C is the topmost stack. So it doesn't matter. So Y is connected to uh, this NMOS here which is C and again Y now needs to be connected to all three trans transistors at the top. So, the connection to C this one is the connection to C. This connection is common to both A and B. So, we see that very intelligently VDD connections to all three MOSs and the output connection to all three MOSs um, the connections for two transistors have been shared. This is to make sure that the number of contacts remain minimum. We will see one example later. Now, this the height is 40 lambda we see is the feature uh, size. So, the height is 40 lambda and this this 4 lambda is nothing but a design rule which says that an example of a design rule which says that there should be a spacing of 4 lambda uh, from the, the other rule. Uh, let us see these are just these design rules are just examples. Uh, they can be these design rules are different depending on different technologies. So, uh, I hope uh, everybody uh, now can read a basic layout and understand a basic layout. Uh, street diagrams are, are a very popular way to help plan layout quickly. Since they are an abstract representation, they need not be on to scale. Obviously, to show different kind of layers. Different metal layers, polysilicon, gel cap. Uh, you would need color pencils or uh, different kind of crayons to draw this layout. Uh, you can do one or two exercises yourself on paper to make uh, to make sure the concept is clear. So the A is an, uh, an inverter layout, and B here is an NAND gate layout. So different legends are shown on the right side. So contact is shown by black, metal is a white bar, and diffusion is a gray uh, bar, and so on. Uh, wiring tracks. Uh, so, a wiring track is a space required for a wire. So, an example uh, could be that of a design rule could be that a wire should be of 4 lambda width and between two wire tracks there should be a spacing of at least 4 lambda. So, let us define a, a new uh, parameter called a pitch. A pitch is, uh, is a combination of the wire width and the minimum spacing it needs. So, the pitch of this wire is 8 lambda that is 4 lambda is the width and 4 lambda is the minimum spacing that is required. So, the, the, the height and the height of the transistor can be represented in terms of wiring track. So, uh, for example, uh, a design rule of this particular technology says that the, the diffusion should be at least 4 lambda uh, high. And again, this polysilicon wire is running between them. 
in the gate. It should be at least four lambda. So a transistor is in fact taking more than eight lambda. It's actually taking more than a wire track here. So let's see an example of uh, okay, uh, one more design rule of well. So an example design rule could be that a well should be surround the transistors by six lambda at So what it implies is that between opposite transistor flavors there should be at least twelve lambda because you would need six lambda down here and again six lambda down here. So the distance between these two would be at least twelve lambda. What it again means is that if the distance is twelve lambda, you could actually draw a wire between these two transistors. Why? Because it satisfies the wire design. How do we estimate the area of a gate after the layout uh, when we are drawing the layout? We estimate the area by counting the wire. That is, uh, for example, for, for this kind of a gate, uh, we could estimate the area by uh, since the pitch of the wire is 8 lambda, we could uh, we uh, multiply by 8 to express in terms of lambda. So, the let us say this uh, this is 40 lambda, so this is 5 wiring tracks, this width is 32 lambda. So, the area of this gate is 40 lambda by 32 lambda. This is an example. We, we saw the construction of O3 AI uh, in terms of static CMOS earlier. Now, let us see the, the this is the layout. I, I guess this is uh, yeah, this, so this is the layout this, in, in terms of stick diagram. So, uh, I will not go into too much detail of this. Uh, I would ex expect uh, all of you to first on the on the left hand side put the transistor level gate design, which is called the schematic. On the right hand side, you study this layout, this key diagram, and satisfy yourself with, with this construction. You would see some interesting features here that is sharing of contact. Um, so uh, one thing is, is, is it's clear. One 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 quick observation you could do is that you see now more taps on the inmost when compared to PMOS. So, you could say that the NMOS circuit requires more parallelism compared to the, the PMOS uh, network. So, the, the since if the network is series, it would require less contact taps. If the network is parallel, since it, the parallel network needs to be connected to VED and GND, each transistor gets connected in the parallel network, you will see more taps in the parallel network, right. So, uh, this is again estimating area. Uh, this uh, estimating area is, is not an uh, it's not very easy doing it on paper. Uh, there are many tools available for layouts. I, I maybe your one of the other electives or courses has layout technique. And when you when you use these tools, you could you could actually estimate area. One thing is very clear. One thing is fixed. Let's remember that the height of a cell is fixed. So you would have to. And draw a layout within those restrictions, keeping the height fixed and varying the width, depending on how many transistors are needed. So let's let's review the topics we studied in this chapter. We saw the construction of uh, some complex gates using static CMOS techniques, and the static CMOS techniques indeed remains the most popular techniques for gate construction. We saw transmission gates. Uh, we saw a tri-state converter. Both are very popular in construction of boxes. Then we saw basic layout design techniques. We saw an interesting layout of a clean code now. Um, again, I would request all of you to take the layout of understanding of the layout of OPEI as an exercise yourself. And if let's say you have access to some tools that uh, you can draw layout, it would be excellent. Uh, thank you all of you. Uh, in next lecture, we would look. Uh, into this, how to estimate and calculate the delay of a circuit. So, two two uh, parameters are very very important in, in during gate design. One is the area, other is the speed or the delay of the circuit. Third, of course, there is one more parameter which is power. But uh, let's we look into more detail into the delay part of the circuit. Thank you.